Water is just flowing through from a neighbor's yard to our yard. And downhill. Our patio, our backyard is flooded all the way up to the house. This is the creek, Tally Ho Creek, behind our house. On January 9th, 2023, the quiet neighborhood of Tally Ho saw historic flooding and damage to their properties. It would soon become one of the wettest years ever recorded in San Luis Obispo County. The Coastal San Luis RCD and Creek Lands Conservation teamed up to host our Creek Relief Workshop. We chose to center the Creek Relief Workshop around three pivotal themes, emergency permitting pathways for three major agencies, best management practices for surface and groundwater protection, and hands-on vegetation management in the channel. We discussed these critical areas to empower landowners to proactively manage their streamside backyards, ensuring the protection for both themselves and the natural environment. It's gone a little crazy here. The best way to remove it is fully digging it out and removing its bulb. So you can take either a machete or a lopper, may I? Just chop it down so that you can then, um, you can then get at the bulb and you don't have a bunch of fiber to deal with. So this goes into the wheelbarrow. This is where the bulb is right here. You can see that little purple. And then you're just digging that out. So. And then ideally you want to shake off all the sediment and right here yeah. this is where you can propagate it but you don't want to right. so we shake this off get all the sediment off make sure there isn't any other there aren't any other pieces of bulb in there this is the hole so like this you know it's really uh, nasty stuff so you want to try and get it all because it'll it'll propagate really easily and then that goes into the wheelbarrow. So here's another example of an issue. This is a, a branch of willow that is now propagating. So we wanna remove everything in the stream channel so that water can flow properly through here. Let's, let's see if we can remove a little bit of this for the first five, 10 minutes. That is the bulb. So we chop the top off and then we dig out the bulb and rhizomes. Take a shovel and just dig out around the bottom and try and shake off the sediment. If you have some, some long fibers, just chop them off at the bottom and that's it. Y'all ready to move on to the next task? Sure. All right, follow me. This is clearly going to be an impediment to, uh, to water and also to, um, to brush. So this can form a dam and then the water is gonna divert to either side and can top your bank. So this thing has fallen and it's sprouting back. So this is our main concern right here. Now, if you can't get it out of the stream bottom uh, because it's really big uh, manually, best thing you can do is just chop it up in three foot sections. So, uh, but you could see it's sprouting right here. So what we want to do is first just clear our workspace. So we're going to clear some area here so we can get the chainsaw in. And this is decent weaving material here, as you can see. We've cleared off the willow and the next step is just to chop it up and remove it. Um, now, you know, we'll see if we can uh, disconnect it from the ground, but we'll, we'll try our best. Get at these roots. That's pretty much it. Okay, so we went down into the creek channel. We saw uh, the invasives that are down there, which is the iris. We saw how to remove those. We saw how to remove the willow that's in the bottom of the channel. 
Um, you need a pretty heavy duty chainsaw, but you can remove it and I ideally you cut it up. If you can't bring it out of the stream bank, out of the, uh, the basin, then you can chop it up into three foot sections. Now we're moving to the top of the bank um, and some of the uh, invasive plants that we can see here are ivy, which is climbing up this willow right here. It's that heart shaped leaf. But here's an example of, of some ivy. And you don't have to do this because there's poison oak in here too. Remember the poison oak has rounded edges and the blackberry has uh, serrated edges. But you basically just hack and pull. Hack and pull. And then once you expose where the vine is, then you can get up next to this tree and just snip it out. So you can do that with pruners or you can do that with a handsaw. Vinca has got these um, alternating or these um, opposite leaves that are kind of heart shaped. And this is the English ivy, which has got a, um, a palmate shape, but it's basically got three points. So these are both invasive. We want to get rid of those. Here's the English ivy. You can see where its vine is and you can just, that's it. It's, it's pretty intuitive stuff. You just cut it where it's connected to the ground. My name is Jesse Trace. I work at Creeklands Conservation. I'm a restoration ecologist and we're going to go over best management practices for planting coast live oak. Clear all the brush. And when you, when you water, um, it's nice to have a layer of uh, mulch or some, or some kind of ground cover so that the water, the moisture stays uh, in the hole and um, isn't evaporated so easily. We got really nice silty soil here. It looks like it's pretty fast draining. So you just want to keep that in mind when you're watering. Uh, it's going to drain really fast, so you might have to water it a little more for uh, these uh, oak trees for the first three years and a lot of native plants. You want to water them maybe every three or four weeks. Uh, but if it's a really sharp drainage, maybe want to do it even more or do more, uh, more water. Generally, like a five gallon bucket full of water once a month is enough, especially if it's shaded. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind that, you know, depending upon your soil, if it's a thick clay, then you might not need to water as much. And you can always just stick your finger in the soil and feel if it's wet or not. So clear your area. And then I always like to put the soil uphill so that you don't have to lift it up twice. You dig out your hole. Um, this Coast Live Oak Basically, it has a hole in the bottom so that the tap root will go down and then come out the bottom and it'll be pruned because when roots reach the air, they, uh, they self prune. Um, so this is kind of the best tree pot you can get. So the rule of thumb for planting a tree is per inch of diameter of the tree, you want to go an inch above grade because what happens is the bigger plants are going to settle. If it's like a two inch diameter, you want it to be two inches above the grade. So it's going to be bermed up and then it'll slowly settle. It's better in general to keep the, the plant up. You probably want to plant it just at grade or a little higher. Figure out how tall your pot is and your root ball by measuring with your shovel. So you can see here, right? Now you know more or less right here. So when you dig your hole, you can, you have a reference got a little bit more. We can always add more. This is a gopher basket that I weaved underwater. Nice. I'm just kidding. Um, this is a, uh, yeah, no, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't get accepted into that class. <laughs> it's a three quarter inch spacing. You can, I, you can go a little smaller. You don't really want to go bigger than that because a gopher can get through but I like three quarter inch spacing because you can get your fingers in there when you're weaving. And if it's much tighter, it's harder to weave the basket. But you can see on this side, it's weaved right here. So you just take a three foot long piece of mesh that's a foot and a half wide or two feet. Um, 
I can give you a class on that. But anyway, you, you, uh, you roll it together, you weave it up, then you weave up the bottom. Put it down in the hole. And then this is an important part for planting. You want to be really careful about the root ball. So this guy's pretty good shape. You want to break that down and you want to fill in all the holes. You don't want any gaps around your root ball because then when you water, if it's not fully saturated, then it's going to dry out. Probably want to amend the soil a little bit. With compost, maybe something a little spongier like um, a peat moss trees like fungal dominated soils and fung and fungus likes uh, woody debris so a tree wants mulch wood chip mulch around it to be happiest so anything that's covering the soil that stops the evaporation so you could use grasses you can use leaves wood breaks down and becomes a really nice food for fungus. Yeah, so protect from the bottom with gophers. I just take another gopher basket and put it over the top. When it's tapped into water like this, it'll get to full size in maybe 50 years. 